Okay. Great. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, John. Hi, if you're okay. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm good, thank you. Pretty in pink. <laughs> thank you. I love your love. It's <laughs> thank blue you. And, is it blue and brown? Yeah, blue, brown. Yeah, blue and brown. Lovely. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> yes. How's your day? Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi, Dr. Z. Hi. Okay. Hi, Dr. Zion. We've got a few more. Should I yet? Can see you. Hi, Michelle. That's my neighbor. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hi, Hannah, too. <laughs> Yinka, welcome. Right. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. We know you could be doing a Oh, loads of stuff today because I know there are loads of people who have just started their Instagram live sessions now and of course they're also the zoom things everybody's in fact I'm zoomed out <laughs> I'm zoomed out <laughs> thank, thank you, you. thank you Shadi. um so yes thank you for joining us today we really do appreciate it don't we Joy yes we do thank you guys so much it means a lot it does it sure does okay so as you all know we're going to be talking about etiquette but in particular um the art of dressing your body shape and that's why we've got joy here that's her area of expertise <laughs> um but i'm sure you all know that a lot of times when we talk when you hear the word etiquette it sometimes puts people's back up they think it's um rules and regulations you know things that tell you this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do. This is how you should behave. This is how you shouldn't behave. But really, it's not that deep, as the, my children would say. It's not that deep, really. Um, but before I talk about what etiquette is, I want to ask a question. How many, or how long, shall I say, how long does it take for you to make an impression when you meet someone? How long? If you know the answer, just put, put it in the comment box. How long? does it take to make an impression <laughs> when you meet someone how long do you how long do you think it takes just take a guess is it one hour is it um five minutes so how long does it take to form an impression that's it somebody said 10 seconds um another person said five minutes five minutes, five minutes. um first five and seconds. Said 15 seconds okay another one is instantly okay well, the latest research, because you know these things change. The late, a minute, okay? The latest research said it's seven seconds. Yeah. That within seven, seven seconds, people would have formed an opinion about you. And it could be what you're wearing, your deme demeanor, the way you carry yourself, the way you speak. <clears throat> Excuse me. Within um, seven seconds. In fact, the truth, some people say it's actually a tenth of a, a, a second. But people just form an opinion. Now, sadly, that opinion or impression, rather, might be a negative one, which if you don't get to meet that person again, it'll be difficult to correct. So that's why it's so important that when we meet people for the first time, we have leave a good impression. Now, of course, because Joy and I are Christians, so we know that some Christian sisters and brothers will say, it doesn't matter where you wear. It doesn't matter. God knows the heart. Yes, he does. He knows your heart. But I don't know your heart. All I know is what I see. So, please let It doesn't matter. Know. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, yeah. <laughs> even God was... I was going to say, that even God was particular about what the priest wore. He was particular yeah. about the colors yeah. that they wore. He was particular about how things were arranged. So, God, it does things, those little details, they do matter to God. So... Now, let's go. Etiquette. Now, etiquette, like I said, some people think they're just rules and um, how you should behave. They're actually rules God, governing socially acceptable behavior. But if you're struggling to find out, okay, what exactly is this etiquette? I would say it's about being polite and having good manners. In fact, there's a quote that I love, Joy, that says, good manners will take open doors that the best education will not yes and indeed I think it's so true yes indeed you know, there's some people who have impeccable manners and you just love them 
I remember my sister had this friend who, anytime she called us, she, and my sister was there and she left a message to say, could you kindly please tell Fulola? And you know, I never, I will always remember to tell her, give uh, my sister the message. So it's about good, um, being polite, having um, good manners, and also about, in fact, if I was going to, um, the definition I always use is, is, is about respect and consideration for others. Etiquette yeah. is about yeah. respect and consideration for others. Yeah, I love that definition. I think it's wonderful. Say it again, say it louder. Etiquette <laughs> is about respect and consideration for others. So let me give you yeah. an example. If Joy invites me to her party, for example, and she has a dress code, let's say black tie, I should respect for Joy, regard for Joy. I should turn up in something that's um, uh, um, red tie. What's it called? What's it? Black tie. Black tie, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, now, of course, Joy, when I was thinking about this, I thought, hmm, this is probably another thing one needs to do because you know, dress codes that you could be red tie, black tie, white tie, it could be smart tie, <laughs> it could be. So that's another, that's another one for another day. But yes, so etiquette really is about respect and consideration for others. Oh, yeah. So going back to today, it's today's etiquette is about dressing and the act of dressing your body shape. And Joy is going to talk <laughs> us through that. But before she goes or uh, comes to talk about that, I want to um, just introduce her for those who may not know her. So Joy, who I've known for, oof, gosh, a long time, over 25 yeah. years now, I think. Much more from um, when Jesus House started in the cinema in Leicester Square. So, okay, that would be 26 years then. Yeah, so, yeah. Quite last year. Yeah. And she's <laughs> an absolutely delightful lady. Oh, thank you so much. And she's also my mentee. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love you too, PFA. Let's just tell them. So Pastor Funke's name is Pastor Funke Adeaga, but she's told me to not call her pastor on this. <laughs> I call her PFA. So just for the record, PFA. <laughs> I can't call her by her name. I thought I said, call me. She's like, no, it's not possible. It's in Nigeria not bringing. It's not possible. <laughs> okay, so... So Joy is an international personal stylist and she's the director of Potential You, a bespoke style and image consultancy. She's a trained personal stylist and she trained at the London College of Fashion and she's been doing this for about 13 years now, right? Yes, yes, nearly 13 years. And she is a fabulous, and I say fabulous, style and image consultant. Oh, she runs a fabulous style and image consultancy that helps women and men achieve their style and confidence um, with their wardrobe. Now, of course, her consultancy offers an array of um, different personal styling things. But you know what, Joy, let me ask this. Because the one thing to read out your resume is another thing to, why do you do what you do? Why is the well, if I can give them, yeah, if I can give a bit of backstory, if that is that okay? Yeah. That's so fine. I'm I'm born from a Nigerian family, and um, in our household, you had about four options of careers: doctors, lawyers, accountants, engineer. Yeah. So I remember being about five years old, and my dad throwing me up, saying, "You'll be an accountant." I was really good at maths. I had a really logical brain, so I just continued in finance, became an accountant got really great jobs, just progressed really well up the ladder. But after about 13 years, ironically, I decided that I just found it quite monotonous and no disrespect to accountants. I always loved fashion. I loved how my mum put things together and I loved how it made women feel, most importantly. So I think it was 2003, I called all my friends around. We did like a brainstorming meeting. I cooked for them, kind of rhymed the idea past them. But by then, I was in accounts for over 10 years. I traveled the world, trained people older than my mom, managed teams. But I just felt it's time to change. But obviously, I was scared. Yeah. So what I remember doing was I had this brainstorming meeting. And then about how many years later, three years later, I remember coming home really late. I worked, traveled a lot. And I remember thinking, gosh, you don't really enjoy your new home mm. because you're always working all the hours. So the next day I wrote a letter of resignation, gave it to my boss. They didn't want me to leave. Okay. And then I then they didn't want me to leave. So then I did a course at London College of Fashion because I really believe that if you're going to do something, you should be qualified, you should be trained. Yeah. So I did the course and I became and I was top of the class, which was really great. Hey. And then I left my job, sold my house, left my job. Um, in 2008, actually, 
And I remember leaving my job on the 11th of February, 2008. And I had my first client on the 11th of February, 2008. She was a single mom with a young boy and she lacked confidence. She always wore black and she was just down on herself. And by the time I finished styling her, yeah. the way she just block butterflied and felt so confident. Right. And at the end of it, I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna get paid for this. So I do it really because I love fashion. And I know how fashion works, but ultimately it's about helping people feel confident in their skin, mm -hmm. helping women feel good. And the name Potential You is not an accident. It was God given. And it's about helping every woman, like my strap line says, release the beauty within. So ultimately it's about helping my clients achieve confidence and style. That's why I do what I do. Love that, love that. Does that help? <laughs> yes, it does. Now we know why you do yeah. what you do and you enjoy what you yeah. do. Yeah, I love it. I'm passionate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies, and I don't know if we have any gentlemen on with us. If you've got any questions, please put them in the question box. So, Joy, and we want loads of questions. Joy is ready to answer yeah. all the questions. Yeah, we, right. we like so, questions. Yes. Yes, yeah, she does like <laughs> So, Joy, why does body shape matter when dressing? Body shape matters because we all come in different shapes and sizes. Okay. In nearly 13 years as a personal stylist, I've styled nearly 3,500 people. Wow. And what I find is that we all come in different shapes and sizes. Yeah. Some are petite, some are tall, yeah. some are tiny, some we all come in different shapes and sizes. And it's important to know how to clothe ourselves. What I always say is that since Adam and Eve ate the apple, wearing clothes is essential. <laughs> And what, and what I say is that our clothes are the only houses we live in for, while we're on earth. You may move home, but you're always in your body. Yeah. And the same way that if you're going to carpet a bedroom or any room, you take the measurements to find out what the measurement is, mm -hmm. is exactly the same way while your body shape matters. We're all very different. Some of us are busty. Some of us are petite. I mean, in my years of styling clients, I've styled from a size zero to a size 26. My smallest client was four foot nine. My tallest client was six foot seven. Whoa. Youngest client was age 14. Oldest client was 86. So everybody varies. So the same way you'll measure out room measurements to measure a carpet is the same way that you should know what works for your shape. Not yeah. one rule fits all. Yeah. And one thing I don't like about fashion is if something is in fashion, everybody goes and grabs it. But actually, you should know what works for you. I don't believe in following fashion. Obviously, fashion is great. It has trends, etc. But definitely wear things that complement and flatter your shape. Yeah. So, for instance, certain things will come out and people will follow it. But actually, know what works for your shape. Know what flatters you, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. So, I think it matters because we're all so different. And it's important to know what works for your shape. And celebrate your uniqueness. We're all individuals. We're all unique. Yeah. And celebrate yourself. Don't copy other people. Know what works for yourself. And I think that's really key. Not everything in fashion is for everyone. If you know what works for your shape, then you'll know what to wear and what to do. For instance, this top I'm wearing, what I actually wanted to wear today was a jumpsuit. Yeah. And it's pink as well. Okay. But I felt very strongly. I felt God tell me strongly what to wear. And this top is from Zara. And I had it since last year. Okay. And it fits my body well. It's fluid but it's not fashion. It's kind of what works for me. So style over fashion. Like style. I think it was Insta Laurent that says, it says fashion fades, style is forever. Yeah. Ladies. So do what works for your shape. Don't follow fashion. That's what Don't I say. Follow fashion. Don't be a slave yeah. to fashion. Don't be a slave to fashion. Style over fashion. <laughs> And, and what you'll find anywhere with fashion is fashion take goes roundabouts. Yeah. Because I remember yes. when I was young, my mum had this big trinket box yeah. with all these platforms and mini skirts and things like that. And when you look back, it comes back around. Back, yeah. But don't follow fashion. What, wear what works for your shape. So that's why body shapes matters. Okay. Thank you, Joy. You're welcome. So, what are the different body shapes? So what are the different words? So there are a variety of body shapes. I'm going to show you a diagram now. Does anyone remember watching? Does anyone remember watching Trini and Susanna's What Not to Wear? Got yes, fashion fix. If you have, hit me up. Just say yes or <laughs> a little wave in the box for us. Show us some love. Okay, right. So there are. Can you see this? Yep. Let me know if you can see this. Give my thumbs up if you can see. Can you see it? Give me a thumbs up. Yes, okay. Excellent. Yeah. So I'm going to talk through four different body shapes. The first shape is the pear shape. So she's much more triangular. Okay. A pear shaped lady is narrow on top. 
So a pear-shaped lady isn't busty at all. Yeah. Her waist is defined okay. and her lower body is wider. So you'd probably call somebody like this a pear-shaped. So you're smaller on top, yeah. smaller back, smaller bust, waist is defined and your lower body is wider. Okay. And then we have this shape here. This is known as an apple or an inverted triangle. So you're top heavy. So you've got bigger back, bigger shoulders, your waist isn't as defined and you're thin and long on the legs. So lower body is much more thinner and smaller. So you're much more top heavy. And then this is what we call a rectangular shape. So I'm using geometric shapes first. So this is what you call a rectangle shape. A rectangle body is somebody that's quite prepubescent. So you haven't really got waist definition. Your upper body, midriff and lower body are parallel. So you're quite straight from top to bottom often called a boyish shape. And then we have the hourglass shape. The hourglass is the most balanced of the shapes and the most aspirational of the shapes. <laughs> when you hear people say Coca-Cola bottle and all that, that is, that is the hourglass shape. So the hourglass lady is defined in the middle. Yeah. Her, top, she's, she's, her top proportion is right in proportion with her, body, with her lower body. Okay. So she's well balanced. Those are the four different body shapes. Was that clear? Yes. Hit me up if you can see that. So we're going from pear shape to apple to the boyish shape and to the hourglass. Is that okay? Can you see that, PFA? Yes, I can. I can see it. Okay, can see excellent. It? Okay. Yeah. Let's say it again. Okay, so now we know the various body shapes. What are the styling tips? Do you have any styling tips for us? Now, I'm not even sure what I am because I would have said I'm pear shape, but I'm not sure yeah. my waist is defined because you said pear shape. Um, nothing well nothing really here and then yeah. define waist and baby. well you know we've worked together so you're 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 definitely pear shape what would happen is when it comes to defining your body shape it takes six different measurements so what i do is i take your bust measurement under bust measurement your waist measurement and your hip measurement okay. so if you if, and then i measure the ratio between upper body midriff and lower body right and then you define your shape but yeah you're a pear shape but I do have a few tips. When it comes to body shape, it does take quite some time to do a measurement, but I will go through them. I'll go through some of them. Does anyone here know what their body shape is? I've seen a few people. Someone said I'm with you, PFA. Um, ah. Know, she just said the same thing. So let's, ladies, do you know what you are? Let's, let's see. Yeah, do you know what your body shape is? is it, does anyone here know what their body shape is? Um, a question, can your body shape change? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it can. Or oh, someone says just how our glass. Okay, that's Catherine. Okay, our glass. Okay, brilliant. What are you, Keji? I'm rectangular. Me too. I'm so, okay, conference pair. What they say is actually 69% of women are pear shaped because of mother nature and how our bodies are made, especially after when once puberty lands, your hips widen. So a lot of women are pear shaped, but really to decipher your shape, it will take you quite some, it will take me to take some measurements and it's something that I do online as well. Okay, what's confidence? Hourglass. Yeah, Antonia, <laughs> that's my friend. She's definitely hourglass, very balanced, in and what's, out. What's conference, conference pair? Someone said I'm conference pair. Okay, I think I'm pear. All right, so should we go through some of the shapes? Yes, please, yeah. I'll give some tips. So if you think that you are more of an athletic boyish shape what you want to do with this shape is that you want to make sure that you wear clothes that are creative so the worst thing you can do is to wear a fitted dress from head to toe if you have an athletic straight shape you want to have some creativity so if either you wear like a pattern top or some colors and then you go really simple on the bottom or you go simple on the bottom and you go really fussy underneath so the key well, to an athletic the shape you, you don't yeah, you don't combine the two. That would be messy. So the key to an athletic shape is creativity. Don't go plain. Don't go boring. So either go for creativity on top or go for creativity on the bottom. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. And then the next shape we have is the pear shape. So all those that are pear shaped. So that means that you're not busty. You're quite narrow on top. Yeah. So what's really great for this shape is to go creative and to go fussy. So you can go for prints, you can go for florals, you can go for like horizontal tops, Briton tops, you know, the stripy tops, yes. because that will balance out your proportion. Oh. A great trick for if you're a pear shape is to use a belt. 
Use a belt to accentuate your waist. If your waist is smaller than your hip. You're always telling me to do this. You're always telling me to do that. Yeah. Remember that dress that we got? Yeah. Use a belt on it. Definitely. Otherwise, it just doesn't show your shape off. And a belt doesn't have to always be tight. It can be slouchy. It can be a chain. It could be a chunky belt. So I would always put a belt on a pear shape. And because you're bigger on the bottom and you're a pear, I would avoid things like skinny jeans, wearing leggings on their own, pencil skirts go for things that are a little bit more fluid so perhaps a bias cut skirt a wrap dress is fantastic on a pear-shaped woman okay. wrap dresses are absolutely amazing they're really flattering of the shape so yeah someone said if what if you're pear-shaped and short pear -shaped and, and short yeah. well i never use the word short i always use the word petite michelle michelle's my neighbor <laughs> hi um and i'll if we can just hold on i'll answer the question about short and petite okay um, and then we have what we call the apple shape. So the apple shape lady, can you see this? Yeah. So if you're top heavy, what you want to do when you're top heavy is to avoid things like polo necks, high necks, mandarin necks. You want to keep your neckline lower. Mm -hmm. not, not as in too low, but V-necks, round necks are really great if you're an apple shape. So don't do things like polo necks and lots of details on top. Keep it lower and keep it plain. And then I'd say go crazy with detail underneath. So things like you can go for tiered skirts, layered skirts, you can go for prints, but keep the upper body lower, keep it plain and avoid high necks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. And then we're going for the hourglass. So the hourglass, which is the most aspirational shape and the I most proportional aspirational. shape. Oh, Everybody <laughs> wants to be an hourglass. I remember I used to say I was an hourglass, but I'm in denial. I'm definitely a pear shape. <laughs> um, so when it comes to hourglass, what I'd want to say is to keep your clothes tailored. Okay. Tailored. So avoid things that are baggy, loose, and ill-fitting. And when I say tailored, I don't mean tight. There's, an abs there's a big difference between tight and tailored. Yeah. So keeping your clothes tailored and fitted is perfect on an hourglass. Avoid baggy, loose clothes because it will just make you look bigger than you are. Okay. Yeah, and, and to go back to, to me now, being an hourglass doesn't mean that you're slim. You can no, be, not at all. Yeah, you can be you can be any body shape, and you could be a size zero, you could be a size twenty. Okay. Your body shape just varies, and how you're structured, and how you distribute fat and muscle in your body. Okay, all right. Good. Yeah. And should we answer Michelle's question? Yes, please. If you're petite and your pair. Yeah. So if you're petite, the key to your shape is about elongating your body. So if you're petite in the UK, you're under five foot four. So what you want to do when you're petite is to keep color continuity. So for instance, if you're petite, you don't want to be wearing different color tops, different color bottoms, different color shoes. You want to keep that continuity of color. So if you're wearing a certain color top, keep the same color bottoms okay. and things like wearing different and wearing the same color shoes. So if you're wearing flesh colored tights, wear the same color shoe. So keep that color continuity. And if you are petite and your pair, follow the rules that I've said, but keep color continuity. When it comes to things like jackets and tops, make sure that they're, they're short and they're up to your waist, nothing longer. So avoid long cardigans, long jackets. Crop jackets are really good as well if you're petite. Keep your skirts above your knee. That is really, really important if you're petite as well. Um, and avoid things like capri trousers. Go for full length trousers or normal shorts. Okay. I hope that helps, Michelle. Someone said, is it true apple shapes shouldn't wear strappy tops? Yeah, strappy tops. Yeah, if you're, I completely agree with that. If you are apple shape, that means you're busty. And if you're busty, you don't want to wear a stripe, um, a thin strap top. Because if you wear a string tap top, that means that you haven't got any support on the upper body. So you really want to go for, so if you're apple, don't go for strapless, don't go for thin stripes, don't go for horizontal stripes. You need support of a good bra. So make sure that your tops are solid, is what I'd say. Okay. Um, okay. Can your body shape change? Yes, yeah, she actually. Yeah, your body shape can change. Your yeah. body shape changes when you hit puberty. Your body shape can also change when you have children. Your body shape can also change depending on how your body distributes weight. But generally speaking, I'd say from about 30 onwards, your shape is the same. And, if, if, and then weight distributes as it pleases. Some people put it on in their bum bums. Some people put it on on their tummies. I know I put weight on in my tummy. Yeah. So yeah, so it depends on how your weight distributes. 
Okay. Is it what true? do you suggest? I'm um, sorry. Before that, it says, uh, is it true that ladies with a full bust should not wear stripy print tops or dresses? Yeah, completely. Keep your top half. That's Juliet. Hi, Juliet. She's in Nigeria. Hey. Yeah. So if you are full busted, you yeah. shouldn't wear any stripy tops and you shouldn't put prints on the upper body. Because if you put horizontal lines across your bust, what, that you're, what you're doing is magnifying your bust. What you want to do is to keep it plain, yeah. avoid prints, but you can go crazy underneath. So go and get stripy skirts and print skirts, but keep your upper body lower and keep it plain. Okay. Thank you. What would you suggest for a broad-shouldered lady? Ah, we seem to have a lot of top, top heavy ladies. <laughs> the same thing. I'd say keep it plain. Keep your neckline lower. Go for more simple, fluid fabrics. And go for things that are much more simple, is what I'd say. Okay. There's a question here. Um, Cheryl, can you put in the question? Because I, in this one... Okay, let me read it out first. She said, I think what a lady wears can be subjected subjective in terms of decency appropriateness um e.g more com conservative people might feel that showing bust is bad but for others it's okay what do you think you want to answer that now or later um pastor funke do you want to answer that one <laughs> i would answer that with the, you remember there was a question that someone sent in about okay um, okay so maybe we can tie them together about yes. sexiness yes okay so the question this person sent in was how to balance modesty and sexy. And I remember saying to Joy, what is sexy? So we decided to look at the dictionary definition yes, of sexy. We did. <laughs> <laughs> and sexy, it says, um, this is Cambridge definition, it says sexy used to describe something that attracts a lot of attention and excitement, or it says um, attractive in a physical way. So I now decided also to go and look at the definition of modesty. And it's, it's, it says it's used to describe something such as a woman's clothing or behavior that is intended to avoid attracting sexual interest or the quality in women, in women of dressing or behaving in a way that is intended to avoid attracting sexual interest. So when you dress up, what is the motive behind what you wear? What is the motive behind the high slit, um, the dress of the high slit? What is the motive? If you feel that you just like it i mean some people say yeah, I, i'm not trying to attract any interest i just like it well fine that's up to you but for me i think it attracts a lot of attention when you wear I, and what's that thing you said joe when we're talking about it as in living more something you said about um um, um less is more or leave something to the imagination leave something to the imagination yes. yeah 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 and, and i think we have to remember that when you talk when you're asked about when people see you yeah. how quickly is it to make a judgment mm -hmm. it's called the seven second rule yeah. and i deliver lots of presentations when you walk into a room it's up to every woman how she dresses we're not here to tell you how to dress yeah. we're here to kind of just share a few tips with you and to answer any questions yeah but what you have to remember is how you dress is how you are perceived yeah so if you want to be perceived in a certain way dressed in that way yeah. but um yeah okay all right, let's take another question. Um, any advice for tall, too heavy women post baby? Maternity baby, clothes, yeah. Maternity clothes are too big, but previous clothes are too small. Please help. Hey, Kosia. Congratulations on your baby. Um, what I would say is that, you know, they have the maternity dresses, tops that are wrapped, that are wrapped over, and then you can tie it at the back. So maybe try to go for things that were your size previously in maternity wear. What I find women doing is going up a size when they go in maternity wear. You don't need to do that. So I would say go for the wrap tops because you can adjust the sizing of it because your bust obviously will increase because you have just had a baby. So the wrap tops are really good. Um, what else would I say? Um, wrap tops, wrap dresses, things that you can adjust the straps on. So try not to go for anything too fixed because it because your body will also change in a few months' time as well. Okay, another question, Joy. I'm short, but I always wanted to wear a turtleneck, but people say it wouldn't look good. Is that true? Sorry, could you ask that again? I'm short, but I always wanted to wear a turtleneck, but people say it wouldn't look good. Is that true? No, if you're petite, if you let us know what height you are, if you're petite, you can wear turtlenecks. It depends on your body shape. 
So maybe let us know your body shape. Okay. Um, another question. What cut of blazer jacket? This is one of the questions I was sent in. What cut okay. of blazer jacket are good for top heavy women with short torsos? Okay, so what I would say is two things. We're going to tackle being top heavy. If you're top heavy, you want to avoid jackets with big lapels. So you want to go for a lapel free jacket. You know, the ones that are just straight like that. Yeah. Just a straight one. So avoid pockets on your blazers as well. Avoid big lapels. Avoid details. So you know, like the embellishments and things like that. Avoid that. Go for a plain blazer. Make sure that your blazer is up to your waist, not any longer. And make sure it's very plain and simple with no lapels. Okay. Thank you, John. And someone just sent in a question. Does body shape also affect footwear? Does body shape affect footwear? Um, not really. Well, when I style clients, I get them to fill out something called a star questionnaire. And I always ask them about their feet. So some people have high in steps. Some people have bunions. Some people have wide fitting. But it's not really dependent on your shape. But what I've also found out is when women put on weight, yeah. sometimes their feet grow bigger. Yeah. Yeah. When they have babies, their feet increase as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, as a professional in your field, Joy, how do you avoid commenting when an individual with a particular body shape is wearing an outfit not best for her body shape? Ah, that's a great question. It's none of my business. <laughs> One thing I've learned, <laughs> One thing I've learned, and I learned this from Joyce Meyer, we'll save ourselves a lot of stress if we mind our own business. Quite if you're not my client and you haven't asked me, you could even be my best friend. Yeah. Unless you ask me my opinion, I'm keeping quiet. So no, I don't have any problems at all. I don't even, I don't even think like that. So imagine I was like that. I'd be possessed every time I went out looking at everybody's body shape. Mm -mm -mm. Unless you're my client and you're paying me, then I'll give you my professional opinion and I'll help you to kind of get the right style. So it's not really a problem that I have at all. I don't even comment on my friends. Unless you ask me, then I'll say. But one thing I've learned, you save yourself a lot of stress if you mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> okay. um, if you want to accentuate your breasts to make them look bigger, what do you wear? Ah, oh, if you want to make it look bigger. Well, there's loads of lovely underwear out there. <laughs> lots and lots of lovely underwear out there. So you can go for padded bras, gel bras. You can go for t-shirt bras. Um, but one thing I do think is important is for us as women to love ourselves as we are. Um, but yeah, as opposed to trying to be something else or trying to look like something else, I think more about loving yourself as you are. There's so many women that are busty and they want to be smaller. Yeah. Yeah. that can't fit into tops and things like that. So that's what I'd say. I'd focus more on loving what you do have. That's what I'd say. For me, Joy, I wear enhancers. Like, yeah, enhancers are great. I used to wear them until I put on weight. Now I don't need them. But enhancers, <laughs> like I said, gel, padded bras, yeah, they're, they're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what about a maxi dress? Can a petite person wear them? Personally, this one is controversial because I have loads of petite friends and clients. Personally, I don't think a petite person looks... A bit long Maxi dresses don't look great on petite women. Generally speaking, your, your dresses or skirts should be knee length or above. What happens is if you're petite and then you wear a whole load of fabric, it drowns your torso. So it's just so much fabric on this small torso and it's a bit too much. And if you're going to wear a maxi dress, I think five foot five and above look fantastic. So I wouldn't put a petite client in a maxi dress. Okay. However, if that's what you want to do, go for it. So, Joy, if you, um, you're a short person or petite person, as you say, yeah. and you're invited to um, a black tie event, where yeah. we know that most black tie events, you're supposed to wear a long dress. Um, yeah. So what do you do then? The truth is black tie, black tie rules have um, become a little bit more lenient now. But nowadays women can also wear cocktail dresses. Yeah. So you can get a beautiful cocktail evening dress that is knee length. Okay. So black tie isn't always so long anymore. You still need to look formal, look smart, but you can also go for a cocktail dress, which can is knee length. Can a person wear, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, three quarters? Three quarter. No, 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 no. So three quarters will just chop your legs off. No. Okay. But obviously, if you're getting married and you want to elongate your legs, you can maybe wear some five inches, five inch heels, and that will just lift you up if you really want to wear a maxi. Okay. All right. Um, how much can a lady in early 40s show? 
Pardon? How much can a ladies in her 40s show? Ah, in, that's an interesting question. I don't like to say an age, but I think if we say how you dress mm. is how you are perceived, mm -hmm. how do you want to be perceived? You know, when I turned 40, did my wardrobe change that much? Mm, I'm not sure. What, what, what about you, Pastor Funke? PFA? Well, I've always been a bit conservative, so I'm not sure I'm the best person to ask. Really. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I don't really like to say if you're a certain age, you should change. But I think just think about how you want to be perceived. Yeah. If you want to be perceived as elegant and somebody that's serious, yeah. somebody that wants to be respected, dress accordingly. So dress how you want to be treated. Yeah. And so would you say that there's certain things? So we'll, I guess it depends on what you, like, the way you want to be perceived. Because I was going to say with a 50-year-old woman look okay in a mini skirt um <laughs> when i'm 50 i won't wear a mini skirt but <laughs> it's, it's not something i've come across most of my clients are age range between 30 and about 60 years old yeah and i've not come across any woman that wants to be in a mini skirt at that age i think that there's a time and season for everything there's a time for everything and i don't believe it's the time but yeah, so it's not something I would recommend, I'd say. I think there's one question there from Hanatu's. I buy a size up. Um, it's, it's above the... Shall I read it? Yeah, read it, go. I buy a size up rather, um, rather than maternity clothes. The people that make maternity clothes are mean. <laughs> well, I haven't had that privilege yet. So that, that's the question... That's a response to Annabelle's question, no, to Akosia's okay. question. Thank you, Hanatu. Okay. Um, what would you suggest for someone with heavy, thick, set legs? Ooh. If you are, that means that you are what we call a pear shaped. So when it comes to a pear shape, you want to keep things, you want to avoid things like really tight bodycon skirts. Mm -hmm. So you want to go for more A-line skirts, bias cut skirts. Yeah. You also want to avoid things like skinny, tight jeans or leggings. You want to go for a straight leg or a boot cut if you are thicker on the leg size. Okay. Um, so someone said, I think Busola, she said, 40 is the new 18. I think, what, where were you comfortable with? Yeah, where were you comfortable with? Um, what are your views? Yes, Joy. What are your views on cleavage and splits on dresses? <laughs> in general. Is that a question? Yes. What are my views on cleavage? And, and I, now, I, just, I just think that what message are you trying to portray? What are you trying to give out? There's a rule in fashion that says if you go for a lower neck top, don't go for a short skirt as well. Pick either or the, or the two. But even in that, I think being decent is really important. And when it talked about sexy, we looked at the definition of sexy. Yeah. It was about trying to attract the interest of somebody else. Yeah. I think in the context of your home with your husband, be as sexy as you like. But you have to also consider what you're doing to other people out there. And I loved your definition of um, etiquette. Yeah. What was your definition of etiquette? Respect and consideration for others. Yeah, so that's my answer to that. I think it's important to, yeah, I think it's important to dress in a way that's considerate to other people as well. You know, and to keep about that, Joe, I remember something that happened in church. Um, a friend of mine had been trying to get her husband to come to church for a long time. And the first Sunday he came, there was a lady sitting in front of him that had on, um, what is it, is it tongs? Um, you know, the- on Tongs, the yeah, yeah. And when she stood up, Obviously, she wasn't aware, so he could see everything. And he was like, see, I told you, I didn't want to come. No, 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 no. And, you know, it's, I thought, oh, my goodness. So we had to tell yeah. him, no, this is not the norm. She probably wasn't aware. So it's, yeah. like, what's a, what kind of message are you trying to send out there by when, what you call sexy or showing cleavage or yeah. showing a slip? But, okay, I, always say that, I always say one thing. I call it mirror, mirror on the wall. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself in the mirror before you leave your house. Yeah. Sometimes people don't know. Yeah. So... For instance, you know, there was a time where everybody was wearing low-rise jeans. Yeah. Really low-waisted jeans. Yeah. To be quite honest, unless you're 18 and under, low-rise jeans don't work for, for most women, especially if you have a tummy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you wear low-rise jeans and you wear your underwear, your underwear will show, your yeah. G-strings will show. Yeah. So just be aware. And there's something I always do with clients. I call it a sit test. Mm -hmm. So do a sit test. 
sit, see what it's like sitting down and standing up and then make sure that you look decent and that's how you want to present. Just do a sit test before you leave your house. That's to tell if the dress is too tight or the skirt is too tight. The yeah. Skirt so if the skirt's too tight, you'll see ripples across the line of the skirt. Okay. But if it fits you well, there shouldn't be any ripples. You should be able to get up. Fashion isn't about being uncomfortable. You should feel comfortable in your clothes. Yeah. So not tight, you can't walk or you can't sit down or you can't drink. I've seen people lying down in the car like that because their clothes <laughs> are so tight. You should feel comfortable in your clothes. Yeah, I think that's important. <laughs> Is there any ship that shouldn't wear wide-legged trousers? Hmm. That's an interesting one. When it comes to wide leg trousers, if you're petite, as in under five foot four, yeah. you should be careful wearing wide leg trousers because it's a bit, it's a lot of fabric. So you know the big palazzo pants, the really wide ones? Yeah. If you're petite and you wear that, it can drown your torso. So I would say that, yeah, maybe petites, just be careful of it. Okay. So, um, I can see a comment. I still like mini skirts when I'm out um and i'm over 40 but i'm cute so okay <laughs> <laughs> um you go girl <laughs> zion said also think about how your children will feel watching you yeah 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 that's, that's a good point um, yeah that's a good point uh let's see any other question yeah someone said showing cleavage, cleavage at any age is in descent um, yeah so Apple Shape should wear plain tops, but use printed for the bottom, prints for the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So keep it plain on top and then keep it, you can go creative and funky on the bottom. <laughs> so said, don't, don't be looking like the tribe of Rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Derry Mo. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Like the um, what's the best underwear for pear shape? Well, I'm not going to endorse any brands, but one of the things I'm really passionate about is foundation underwear. I believe every woman should have one. As in, when I say foundation underwear, I'm not talking about the girdles that you can't breathe in, okay. that are like coat of arms. I'm talking about things that just scheme your body and smooth your body out. Yeah. There's Spanx, yeah. there's m and is a good one, but even places like m and like I've got one that's 22 pounds from m and yeah. And I have like four of them. They're fantastic. Yeah. So sometimes people can't afford Spanx. I have Spanx, but there's also, depending on what you're wearing. So if you're wearing a dress, mm -hmm. the foundation underwear dress, should, you should wear that underneath okay. fully. If you're wearing maybe trousers, they have the shorts one. But yeah, foundation underwear is important for any woman. And it's not just for women that maybe feel like they've put on weight. Whether you're a size zero or a size 20, foundation underwear is great. It's just a way, great way of giving your clothes a really good foundation. Okay. Is it a good place to talk about um, showing, uh, what's is it PVC? No, not PVC. What's it called? Um, you know, the underwear. Um, oh, VPL. V VPL, sorry. VPL, yeah. yeah. And another thing is in Marks and Spencers, and I don't work for them or get anything, <laughs> there's something called no VPL underwear. They have three for 12 pounds. And I think every woman should invest in them because, you know, nowadays fabrics can be quite thin, quite transparent. So yeah, no VPL underwear is also really great. Okay. Um, I think you've answered this. What's your advice for ladies post-pregnancy when your waist expands? I think you've done that. Yeah, so when your waist expands, and this is for everybody, what I find is that I always ask clients, what are, what are the problem areas when it comes to dressing? A lot of women put weight on on the waist. Okay. The worst thing you can do when you've got weight on your waist is to put a belt on it. Do not put a belt on your waist. It's like plonking a big horizontal line across the biggest part of your body. You're just exaggerating it. So what I would also say is avoid things like tight tops, really tight jersey tops. Go for blouses, yeah. beautiful silks, beautiful chiffons, mm -hmm. fluid fabrics are fantastic and they hide a multitude of sins. Yeah. Hence, I've got this silk top on. Can you see? COVID has been doing my body havoc. <laughs> <laughs> excellence i don't know why you don't like vpl but anyway um question please can you suggest some creative pieces for rectangular body shapes rectangular body shapes um what i would say is jewelry accessories color is fantastic so for instance if you're going out on a really nice summer's day and once we're let out maybe go for a pair of white linens or white jeans and maybe wear like a nice caftan top 
on top. Something that's got lots of colors, lots of details, lots of embellishments. And then if you've got that on top, keep the lower half really simple and really plain. So play with creativity either on top or at the bottom. But a caftan top's fantastic for a, um, for a rectangular body shape. The key word for your shape is creativity. Right. Thank you, Joy. Um, slim legs, small shoulders, flat stomach, very large bum and boobs. What outfits suits this shape? Sorry, can we say, can we say that again? Slim legs, small shoulders, flat stomach, very large bum and boobs. What outfit suits this shape? What shape is Well, I'd have to know what your body shape is <laughs> when it comes to that. But you sound like you have um you sound like you have an hourglass shape from what you've said. So you've got a bust, you've got a bum, your waist is accentuated. So again, go for fitted dresses, tailored clothes, clothes that are really flattering yeah. to your shape. So avoid anything baggy and loose. There's so many questions, Joy. Thank you so much for sending all these questions. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank you for sending the questions. <laughs> yes, Primark does cheaper VPL. Yes. Um, I have big hips for my, style, for my size. What do you think about white jeans? I wouldn't. If you are white magnifies, so if you are bottom heavy, as in a pear shape, I wouldn't put you in white jeans. If you really wanted to wear white, maybe consider some white linen trousers because they're a bit more fluid and less clingy. But I would go for darker, if you're bigger on the bottom, I would go for darker colors on the bottom and add lots of color on top. Okay, um, let's see, any more questions? Okay, I think no more questions. So Joy, um, personal styling, is it only for people who have got loads of money for the rich? And famous. No, I think that I think there's a misconception. People always think, oh, you're a personal stylist, you work with rich and famous people. While I have worked with that, it's not really just for rich people. I have clients who have no budget. So clients who say to me, Joy, can you give me an update for spring summer? And I've only got five hundred pounds. Okay. So I'll take them to Zara, I'll take them to M and S. It's not really about budget because I think you can look great no matter what you wear. Yes. So some days I'll wear Zara, some days I'll wear designer. Yes. It's not about the brand. Don't be a slave to logos and to brands. Mm -hmm. Logos and designers is not fashion. Yeah. It's, that's how they spend, that's how they make you spend their money. You can look stylish on the high street. Yeah. And so I, I help women with all sorts of, all sorts of different budgets. So it's not really about a service for the rich and for the famous. I've done I've seen the queen's wardrobe. I've been and seen her wardrobe. I was invited to come and see her wardrobe and her clothes all through the different decades. But I've also worked with mums who have got a small budget but want to look great. They want to know what works for their shape. They want to sort out their wardrobe. So I do a detox. They want to kind of feel confident in their skin. So it's not just about designers and being a slave to logos. Wearing designer clothes doesn't mean that you're fashionable or you're stylish at all. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, just in a question, what colours should an obese lady avoid? What colours? Should an obese a lady who is big, what colours should she avoid? Yeah. Irrespective of your size, your body shape will still be there. So what I would focus on is, I wouldn't put you in all black, because it's scientifically proven that colour can lift your mood. Yeah. There's a notion that if you're big, just hide away in black, just, you know, throw everything. But I wouldn't do that. I would want to understand what your body shape is. Yeah. And then I would dress you accordingly. And when it comes to color, it's always the color upper body that matters. So I'm trained as a color analyst as well. And when it comes to colors, it takes me an hour to do it. Whatever you wear, upper body really, really matters. So your jewelry, your tops and things like that. Okay, so um, you might want to contact Joy directly. Send her a DM. If she does, like she said, she's also, um, what do you call it? Color... Color analyst. I do color analysis, yes. personal shopping, all that, wardrobe detoxing, all sorts of services. And obviously, because of COVID-19, I've been working remotely. So I've been doing lots of consultations online. So instead of personal shopping in the shops, I do online shopping for clients. I also help you sort out your wardrobe. So if you want your body shape done, it will only take half an hour and it's only £49. It's not lots and lots of money. Okay, so please send her a DM. Well, we've got about 10 minutes to go. Any more questions? Gosh, the time's gone so quickly. I know. <laughs> it's all, it's all Thank you for all your questions. That's amazing. Where can we get nice flat shoes for all occasions? Um, I would always say maybe go to department stores. Department stores. Okay. Yeah. 
So, um, Joy, if anyone wants to contact you, how can they contact you? So my website yeah. is www.potential-u.co.uk. Yeah. You can also contact me via Instagram and Facebook at Potential You Stylist. Right. And then on Twitter and LinkedIn, I'm Potential You. But if you have any questions, you want help with your style, hit me up and it's not as expensive as you think. Okay. You can start as little as £49. So yeah, contact me and contact I'll be happy to help. Her. Just send her DM. That's the easiest. So send her a direct message. Um, one, more, one more question before we go. Are there any brands that cater to busty women? Do you know any brands that cater? Pardon? Are there any brands that cater to busty women? Um, places like Bravissimo are really good for busty women. But what I would say is that if you're busty, li little tips. What you probably find is that you sometimes can't find a dress that fits you wise. Don't be afraid to wear separates. So sometimes a different size top and a different size bottom, okay. you know, and it's really important to always size up than size down. So if you find that you're in between sizes, so for instance, if you're a size, maybe you're big, you're, a 14 is too big, mm -hmm. but a 12 is too small, buy the 14 and, and you can get it altered down as opposed to wearing things that are really tight. Because if you wear things that are really tight, it just makes you look bigger than you actually are. And then you're uncomfortable. So always size up. Yeah, so they said Bravissima. Rigby and Pelle is my absolute favorite. Yeah. The reason I don't always recommend them is because they're really expensive. But Rigby and Pelle are amazing as well. Oh, yeah, we did talk about uh, women getting... Underwear, them. yes. Yeah. So, yeah, one thing I'd encourage women to do is to get measured. What I found in my years of styling women is that often we wear the wrong size bra. So the back is too big, as in the inches, yeah. and the cup is too small. Okay. And even when it comes to cancer awareness, they always say that when you wear a bra, it should cover your breast tissue from underneath your armpit to the middle of your chest. Yeah. So I would encourage women to get measured. Places like Rigby and Pella are great. They won't charge you. And you can go there, get measured, and then get your bra wherever you like. Okay. But yeah. Joy, website again. My website is www.potential-u.co.uk. And if you want to, if you hit me up on Instagram, you'll see it in my, um, in my box. Yeah. Okay. Um, I saw a question. I always thought that dark colors are elegant and chic. How do I maintain this with patterns? I'm not a fan of patterns and loud, and loud colors. What I found in my years of styling is that Patterns are like mama. You either love them or you don't like them. So for instance, last week I was um, online shopping for a brand new client. Yeah. And what she said was she doesn't like patterns. But what I like, what I realized that she likes geometric prints. So this would be considered a pattern, but it's actually a geometric print. So it's linear lines. So what I would say is that it's understanding color and maybe starting with things like stripes, geometric prints okay. and then maybe then but but with patterns if a client told me she doesn't like pattern what i wouldn't do is to force a pattern on her it's very much you like it or you don't like it right. so maybe just see around what you do like what was the first part of her question um was it i always thought that colors are elegant and chic how do i maintain this with patterns i'm not a fan of patterns and loud colors yeah, keep the patterns minimal. Maybe keep the patterns to just two different colors as opposed to a carnival of lots of different colors. And maybe start with little pieces. Maybe it can just be like a scarf that's a pattern and then you can build up. But just keep to maybe two colors maximum. Maybe a pattern top and then plain bottoms as opposed to having like a riot of colors. Okay. Um, thanks, Joy. Really, this has been really oh, you're welcome. Well done. Um, Thank you. Would you opt for quality over price, i.e. Pri primary jumper for, I think maybe that's Primark, Primark, Primark. jumper for price instead yeah. of whistle? I de I'm definitely about quality over quantity. They say if you buy it cheap, you buy it twice. <laughs> so I would rather go to somewhere like M&S and buy my underwear yeah. than somewhere like Primark. But I also have to remember that everybody has different disposable income. So you can't really impose what people should spend. I think it's about buying what you're, you can afford. Yeah. But quality is really important because quality is more durable. Yeah. You can wash it, you can wear it, as opposed to some things that are just easily disposable. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we, have, we might have another question. Let's see what that is. Let me just put a question. Wow. We have five minutes to go. And um... Can we talk about your book, please? 
Oh, okay. In a minute. Let me just say, um, <laughs> what happens if your shape isn't any of the outlines? I feel like mine, like after the kids have no, okay, I think we've answered that one. Um, I think that's it. I can't think of any other one. I can't see any other one. Um, right. Do more of this. Um, it's great. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Well thank done, you. Joy. Thank She's you. been absolutely amazing. Thank um, you for having me. What are your thoughts on fast fashion trend over the re recent years? I think fast fashion is great when you're young because that's what you do. You buy things cheap, you chuck them away. But when you get to a certain age, quality is great. Yeah. But the caveat is if you can afford it, if you, can afford you know, it, yeah. if you can afford it, everybody's disposable income is. So I'm not a fast fashion lover because I want to buy something. And what I say to clients is that if you buy something, you should be able to wear it for at least half a decade. Yeah. And that's five years because then you can wear it again and again and again. So quality over quantity. But my caveat is it depends on if you can afford it. Everybody's budget is different. Yeah. I mean, I have a Ralph jacket blazer I bought in 1998, Joy. Yeah. yeah I still wear it. Yeah, exactly. Timeless. timeless. There's nothing like timeless, timeless pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Elegant, you can wear them again and again. And I always teach about having a capsule wardrobe. There's certain things that you can buy and wear them forever. In fact, you'll get bored and they haven't <laughs> fallen apart. Was that Pastor Wumi there? Yeah. Hey, Pastor Wumi. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> great joy oh wow thank you so much so joy tell us your fashion um, i said your fashion your social media handle again um, um so potential hyphen you.co.uk website and potential you stylist on instagram on facebook and potentially on twitter and linkedin thank you all so much thank you. And Thank if there's any other topics you'd like us to cover, just let us know. Send us uh, yes. a DM and we'll see. Oh, okay, Joy. Pastor Funke has an amazing <laughs> book called Because Manners Matter. And she's got loads of sections on there about jokes, about fashion, and it's available on Amazon. Yeah. I love this book. So, yeah. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you, ladies, for asking questions. Remember, it's really important to dress and to project confidence. It's always about confidence. So my, my joy is to help you feel confident with what you're wearing. And thank you so much for joining us. And you can see that she's passionate about what she does. She's yes, I love it. I absolutely years. love it. No, no seriously, <laughs> it's been actually very, very useful. Very useful. Thank you. I really thank appreciate you. you for that. Um, thank you, PFA. One word, one word before we go. go like, one word. Don't dress for where you are, dress for where you're going. Please repeat that again. Don't dress for where you are, dress for where you're going. So if you want that job, dress for the job. Don't dress for where you are, dress for where you're going. And we're going far. We're going far, we're going far, we're going far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you, oh, thank you. Guys, you. Thank you. about a minute left. But hey, thank you so much everyone for joining us. Again, don't forget... Um, if you want us to co cover a particular topic, send us um, a DM and we will. Yeah. Um, yeah, dress for where you're going. I love that, really. Dress for where you're going. Yeah. That's the way you also want to be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. We're going far. Yes, Pastor Wumi. We yes, are going we're going far. far. All the way up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we wow. should have music the next time. Yes, we should. <laughs> we're going far. Someone said we should have one on manners, Pastor Funke. That's yours. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll have one on We manners. need it. <laughs> <laughs> manners make it a man. Yeah. We're going far. 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 Higher, 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 higher. <laughs> Love you, PFA. Love you. Thank you for having me. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Please Thank save you. it, Thank as somebody said. Bye. <laughs> Some of us are married. So yeah, don't worry. Joy yes. says she'll help you. To yes. <laughs> See, countdown. Two, one.